Hello and welcome to AmainHobbies.com. I'm Gregor McGrath, and today on RC Talk, we're going to cover part three for setup on the new AR7200BX and MicroBeast flybarless systems. Today on part three, we're going to do a brief overview of the parameter menu setup. To enter the parameter menu, simply hold down your button on the MicroBeast Flybarless system and let go of it before the light goes solid. After the light goes solid, it puts us into parameter menu A, which is your cyclic center adjustment. If for some reason, when you do a climb out with your helicopter and the helicopter doesn't just go straight up and it kind of leans to the side a little bit, you can adjust independently the aileron and the elevator and adjust those until you get your desired climb out. After that, we're going to push the button and go to menu B. Menu B is going to be our control behavior. Now this defaults to sport. This is going to be a good place for beginners out there. If it still feels a little sensitive after you've flown it, you can turn that down to normal. If you want, you can turn it all the way up to extreme. I like to go up to extreme and then actually use my travel adjust to get a better roll rate out of the machine. And so this is kind of user defined. This is uh, going to be set by the user, you. And, uh, and after you get the desired control behavior, go ahead and move on to C. Menu C, I like this. For a lot of high powered electrics, this menu really helps out a lot. In fast forward flight, if you get any pitching up behavior coming out of a loop and the machine kind of porpoises like a dolphin, you can increase or decrease this. By increasing it too much, it will give you limited control and the helicopter will feel like it's resisting you a little bit. If the menu is too low, then you'll definitely see that porpoising like a dolphin and you want to get rid of that with this menu. After that's completed, go ahead and go to parameter menu D. Parameter menu D is the tail headlock gain. The tail headlock gain on version two, I highly recommend going into the manual, reading over the couple paragraphs that are in there. Uh, I've seen with version 3.0, all the way up to 308. I simply just go and change the color to blue flashing. My pirouettes seem really consistent and the tail holds very, very well. So again, if you have 3.0 to 3.8, you can almost, in most cases, go up to, to blue flashing and your tail's gonna be almost perfect at that point. You may have to adjust your, you know, your gain in your transmitter a couple times to, you know, up or down to get rid of that little wag, you know, and uh, right hand bank turns and things like that. Other than that, pretty simple. Moving on to menu E. Menu E is stick dead band. If you want to read a little more about that, you can in the manual. I typically leave that at default. If you turn your stick dead band up too much, the helicopter, it's going to have a, a large dead spot around center. If the, if the dead, dead band is too low, you're going to have a hard time finding center of the helicopter. It's going to be very twitchy for you. So again, I would go ahead and recommend to leave that at default and you're good to go. Parameter menu F, tail torque pre-compensation. This works really good for you scale guys with multi-rotor helicopters. What this does is it actually adds a little bit of tail rotor pitch uh, per your collective pitch. So when you have multi-rotor blades, it's, it's going to put a lot of torque on the tail. So what it does is adds a, a, a little bit of, of pitch per your cyclic pitch. So uh, that way the tail holds really well. I like to use this and turn it up uh, with my 450. I use a very high powered motor in my 450 and it seems to really help the tail in hard climb outs and, and things like that uh, to really maintain its, its stability and its, and its head locking basically. So uh, other than that, we can move on to parameter menu G. Parameter menu G, I like this. This is your cyclic input response. This is gonna speed up the cyclic around center stick for you. So the, the, when you, if you want a quick reacting machine off center, turn this menu up. I like to turn it up depending on the machine, blue flashing, sometimes red solid. Again, it kind of depends on the machine. And again, this is uh, something that I would call uh, a user preference uh, menu. Then we move on to menu H. This is our pitch boost. Uh, in other fly bar lift systems, we hear it uh, referred to as uh, paddle simulation. This kind of gives the machine a non-linear uh, feel, kind of like a fly bar machine. 
And uh, I like to turn this up. I like to get a lot of pop out of the blades. Um, not always desired. And again, this is uh, something else I would call uh, user-defined or uh, something that, that you're gonna wanna, wanna play around with yourself. If you are beginning and you're just learning how to fly and you've jumped into the Micro Beast or Air 7200 fly barless world, I highly recommend you leaving those, those two parameters, menu G and menu H, at the default positions. Once you've gained uh, your, your comfortability, I would go ahead and start playing with those. But it, until then, go ahead and leave those stock. Other than that, that concludes part three. Push the button, exit the menu, you see the fly barless is initialized, and you're all set, ready to go, and have fun. Thank you again for joining us today on RC Talk.